Welcome to our new segment, Sailors in Suits, the show with good looks and even better sailors. Today, we have with us Connor Bluen, currently the assistant coach at the College of Charleston. Connor, how are you doing? I'm doing great, Will. Good to be here. So, Connor's a highly decorated sailor. Right away, I want to hear about the pennies hanging up behind you. <laughs> so, uh, I mean, I've had a long, fortunate sailing career. Um, the last, uh, you know, after leaving college, I knew I wanted to continue with sailing, didn't know exactly what I felt like from a financial standpoint. And, uh, and for, you know, a bunch of other reasons, having a, a different career and wanting to, you know, make money in the world, I felt like Olympic sailing might have gone past me. So um, I, I do a lot of different sailing, but um, one of the ways that, you know, I started sailing radials, because um, it was something I fit into. And I just knew that I always wanted to have a career sailing. And uh, eventually I saw an opportunity to do the Pan American Games and the Sunfish. Um, I ended up qualifying in, you know, I had had a little hiatus from sailing, you know, as you leave college, you have to find a career and I bounce around. Right. Sorry. Oh, I said, yeah, you have to find a job. Yeah. You got to find a job and it's, it's not always as easy and, you know, parents don't always, you know, fund you and all that stuff. They'll take care of you, but they're not going to pay hundreds of thousands of dollars for you to go do Olympic stuff. So I had to kind of find my own way here a little bit. And uh, I found an opportunity in the Sunfish, which I had sailed on and off when I was a youth sailor. And uh, I decided to really go for it and qualified 2015, did Toronto with Team USA. Um, I broke my wrist right before the event. So I, I really didn't get to prepare the way I had wanted to. Um, I had just finished third at the Worlds and felt like I had a good chance at a medal. But um, I, I really just didn't prepare well and I didn't sail well there. Um, and then this next lap around, I went for it again after doing a bunch of other sailing as well. Um, I, I won a bunch of events going into it, including the trials. Um, this time I trained as hard as I could and I ended up falling. I was in metal position for most of the event and ended up finishing fourth. But um, I, I don't think I could have sailed it any better. Well, we're prepared it, any better. <laughs> right. Yeah, no, and you were here at Lake Forest with us for a bit while you were training. We were all watching you. <laughs> yeah. We are all rooting for you. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. That's right. So, Connor, um, you are living the college sailing uh, spring season being canceled. Talk, yes. Talk to me about that. How are your sailors doing? How it, How are you doing? But, you know, I'm more interested in how your seniors are doing. Yeah, so... Um... I can't really speak. I'm sure every senior's experience is really different. I think whether, you know, right now when you're their age, I'm sure you're very close to it. So I'm sure some of them are devastated and I'm sure some of them are relieved and I'm sure some of them um, may not even know how to feel yet. Um, But, you know, these kids, you know, in any college sailing program that's full varsity, legit. There's some clubs that are like this too, but it's pretty full on and you're going to put hours and hours and hours in. So sometimes it's like, just feels like kind of big deep breath that you don't have to do it anymore. Uh, I'm sure for some of them on some level, and I'm sure some of them were really, you know, looking forward to the competition, but I can almost guarantee that, you know, in a year they will miss it and they will be upset. Yeah. they didn't get this. So even if they don't feel that way now, I'm sure some, I'm sure most of them do, but even the ones that I'm sure don't know how to feel right now, or might be a little bit relieved that they don't have to sail nine hours. (laughs) It's it's a lot, especially with your team, you know, do all those workouts and finally get a break to be true college kids for a little bit, even though they're not really in school. I'm sure that they will, uh, they're going to miss it when they go into the real world on some level, on some level, even if it's just being at practice with your friends every day. How how has your, how have your summer plans changed or how are your summer plans looking in the middle of all these unknowns? Well, right now, you know, I'm in South Carolina and I don't know, I'm sure it's varying state to state right now. I'm currently supposed to coach a 420 racing um, at a Carolina yacht club and Uh, talking to my boss the other week it doesn't sound like there's any plans for that to change but you know I also have you know 
small contingency plans for hopefully later in the summer, like coming right. to Lake Forest, I'm hoping. Um, my buddy wants me to go train, do a wasp clinic out in Hawaii. Nice. You know, I've, I've got like, you know, I've got all sorts of stuff. So you know, for let, in, let me interrupt like, you real quick, Connor. So Connor, you are, you know, working in South Carolina, you coach Charleston, you travel with all of these, with your teams all over the place and you sail over the place. Tell me all these places you've been sailing the past couple of years. So, um, well, especially with the, you know, I, I've done, you know, the biggest project that I've had on my plate for the last, I think, five years has been the WASP class. And uh, I won a WASP national championship in Charleston. Our biggest regatta is typically the ACCs, which I won um, the last time. I actually don't think I've ever finished outside the top two at a WASP regatta. I won the first WASP regatta in, in North America as well. Um, I've had a lot of, there's a lot of really talented people in the class and I haven't won every regatta. My brothers won a ton of stuff, Reed Baldridge. But the, the blue ones are up there? The blue, the the blue, blue ones bros. won all three WASP national championships. My brother has two, I have one. I was making sure I had your results right as I was getting ready for this. And I was <laughs> like, oh, We dang. currently, and, and our father made the trophy, um, nice. uh, which is a really beautiful trophy. Tell, us, tell us real briefly about the WASP. Uh, Wasp is really cool. You know, I, uh, again, going, sailing, <laughs> big thing that I enjoyed doing after college, because I was not a laser radial sailor, not a laser sailor, and I'm very small. So I, I got into the laser radial post-college because I felt like I wanted to sail. You know, the Sunfish is a great boat and a great class, but in terms of continuing to develop me as a sailor post-college, I didn't feel like Sunfish was the best boat to uh, level up my performance. Right. So I started sailing radials because I thought it would improve my downwind sailing. It would continue to improve my fitness, my understanding of boats. I mean, the laser is the, you know, Rosetta stone of great sailors. Right. So, you know, almost every great sailor in history has done something in a laser at some point. And, uh, I felt like that was the move for me, but after you do it for a while, you know, and you're, uh, gosh, I was probably 23, 24 when I started, you're sailing. That's a late almost, start. That's a really late start for very that late high start. level laser sailing, yeah. <laughs> and, and, and it was a learning curve. Right, you climbed it, pretty it, quickly. It, sorry? I said you climbed that learning curve pretty quickly though. Yeah, I mean, like I, I've always enjoyed the fitness side of it. So I became a relatively strong upwind sailor, I think quick. The downwind stuff took me a long time. And sometimes I still feel like it comes and goes. It's, you yeah, know, it just really true. depends. And that was a big hurdle for me. But I, I, I felt like I became a strong laser radial sailor, at least. And I have a couple OCR medals. And, you know, um, I never got to do a Worlds or anything like that because they were never, you know, affordable. Right. But, you qualified um, for them, though. I did qualify for them. And a few people that I had beaten podium. So, like, I felt like I could, I could have been. I could have done well, yeah. but eventually you are only sailing against most of the events are sailed for high school kids. And, um, you know, the ones that I would do, you know, so I had to back out, I not had to, but I, I decided it was probably not best for me to just be sailing with high school kids. Right. Um, you know, but, uh, I did a lot of sailing with, uh, women doing, um, uh, Olympic campaigns training um, with them, and yeah, training with them competing against them, got to sail against Evie Van Acker in my last yeah. regatta and Emma Plasher, who uh, Evie's medaled and been to two games. And I think Emma's one of the top five radio sailors in the world. Um, so Connor, know. what boats are you focusing on going forward? Are you still sailing the radial or is it mostly well, Wasp? No, well, so, so that was, I know it's a long segment to get it's to the good. Wasp, but yeah. um, you know, like my thought was after a certain point, there was nothing more for me to sail in the radial that made sense. You know, it's just, I was the only male between the ages of 22 yeah. and, like, time you to know, go, time to find 35. It's out. just like, it wasn't, it wasn't a class that was meant for me while right. I, while I learned a lot in that class, it wasn't meant for me. So I was looking for the next thing and I was looking at snipes and I was looking at like, I was looking at something that, you know, a lot of people, they choose their boat based on how cool it is. I always try to evaluate is the class worthy is the boat worthy is it affordable can i afford to be it's you know i don't come in expecting to win right away necessarily but there's a difference between coming in and expecting to win right away and being able to put the work in behind to be successful and just around that time my brother had been like kind of looking at moths and he couldn't find one that was affordable and stuff right, and then right. he said he said something to me about how this one design moth like class was coming out 
and they had like, it was, it was, you know, right when I'd started working at St. Mary's college. And I remember I was paying almost no rent at the time and I wasn't making much money, but I basically stopped eating for like six months. I was eating very little and I was spending no money because I was saving to pre-order this boat. And I just made it and I was one of the first pre-orders. And uh, so the Wasp has been a big part of what I've been doing yeah. uh, since then. And uh, I was very excited. <laughs> I'm sure it made my parents really thrilled that I put most of my life savings at the time into buying a boat. But um, I've, I haven't regretted it one day since. So well, we'll we'll insert some video up here of you ripping around on the wasp, so yeah, that everyone sure. can can really see what you're talking about. <laughs> so Connor, we're gonna tear into our uh, our kind of premier segment here in Sailors and Suits, right. rapid fire questions. So you and I are quite possibly the worst duo to be doing rapid fire questions together because we both worth the talk. We're the greatest duo ever. <laughs> we're the greatest duo ever. Period. So Connor, don't think too much, man. And just okay. re respond right away. And All if right. you have something you really want to say, just make it a run-on sentence. That's totally fine. All right. <laughs> Love it. First, cats or dogs? Cats. All right. Why? Uh, we've always had cats growing up. I love dogs, but dogs are a lot of work. All right. That's cats fair. Easy. Uh, workout song right now? Workout song. Oh, I had one, too. Um, Ain't No Love Ain't by no Jay-Z. By Jay-Z. I'll have to check that out. All right, next one. How many crunches have you done so far today? Zero today. I did a uh, I did a uh, hiking bench for an hour yesterday with a uh, hundred sit ups at the end. How do you split and, that? And up? if you'll remember, when I was there, I was doing a thousand sit ups. I know you were preparing for for, for Peru. <laughs> for Peru. That, that's why I asked. All right, if, uh, what would your last meal be? Eggs. Eggs. Yeah, I remember that about you too. Um, if you had to retire today, what would you do tomorrow? Uh, Call of Duty Pro. <laughs> I guess that's a, you're probably getting good, duty pro. good at that right now. I'm good at that. Uh, good hair day, bad hair day. I don't have hair. <laughs> did, you see, did you see the picture? I knew this was coming. That's yeah. the worst, worst picture I've ever seen in my life. <laughs> Who is that guy? I don't know. Don't, don't know? Recall. All right. If you had to go anywhere for a month just to sail and hang out, where would you go? Uh, just to sail and hang out, uh, Tampa, Florida. Where I that, grew up. That's where you're from, right? Yeah, where you grew yeah. up. Yeah. Um, who's your favorite sailor? Steve or Will? Steve Luke or Will Kirk? Oh, Steve. Steve. No doubt. It, it was that easy for you? It was that easy. Oh. You told me not to think too much. Yeah, that's true. All right. I love Will, but Steve is the man. Sailing legend. Uh, I really love Robert Scheidt, um, but I, I've, uh, I, I listened to a podcast with the Ian, Ian Percy recently, and uh, I think Ian Percy is pretty amazing as well. Yeah, Ian's been sailing a lot of boats and doing really well. Yeah, obviously. really impressive. Robert Scheidt's the, the laser and star guy. Yeah. Um, yeah, but Ian Percy also has beaten him in several star and fin things. So yeah. they're, they're both amazing. They're both good. All right, who's your favorite or what's your favorite regatta to sail each year? Uh, probably Wasp ACCs or Sunfish Midwinters if I, if I get to do them. Hardest, really hardest thing about being a college sailing coach? Uh, the travel, travel is a lot. Um, and you know, you, you spend a lot of time with, uh, your friends are going to do fun things and get to live their lives a little bit more. Um, while, while what I do is very rewarding. I, I do think the travel is very, it's very hard on coaches. Yeah. Best thing. What's the best thing? Best thing. Um, I get to talk about sailing all day nice. and not, I love sailing. Not so bad, right? <laughs> yeah. So youth sailing. And coaches and sailing directors and summer instructors, what are we missing? What can we do better that you're seeing in these college sailors? What are they missing when they come to you? Yeah, I think, um, you know, I'm sure this will be a very controversial take. Um, but, you know, I think the best, the people who find the biggest success in the sailing world, in the sailing world in particular, and, and I'm mostly talking about drivers because I've seen crews overcome this at a greater rate. But when people exclusively, I want to be very carefully word this, exclusively no do high school sailing. Um, high school sailing is a really cool add-on that gives people an opportunity to sail and everything like that. But there's, um, you know, there's a lot of sailing out there. And the best sailors I usually see come through come from Club 420, I-420, Laser, 29er. And then they also do high school sailing on top of that. And when a whole team travels to a high school event and four kids get to sail, 
you have, you know, 15 other kids that probably should be out sailing somewhere else getting work done. Yeah. Um, that, that, that's just my take, you know, no, there's, there's a, a lot of make, people will tell me I'm crazy. It's all good. That makes a lot of sense to me, you know? All right, Connor. So that's an interesting thought about high school sailors and, you know, what you're seeing as a college coach, getting them sailing more than just their high school programming, experience different boats, different tuning, everything like that. So all these kids around the country and around the world, all these youth sailors are stuck at home right now in quarantine. You know, what do you have for them? What can they be working on right now? Are they missing it that much by, by the time on the water? If everybody is, where are people going to get advantages and gains on their competitors while stuck at home? Yeah, and it's it's always easy. And whether actually, whether you're in quarantine or not, it's always easy. And I see it all the time. It's one of the critical mistakes that young people, young sailors and older sailors make is that you can't ever be the person. You got to take responsibility for your own sailing career. Uh, on some level, you can't wait for it to come to you. Um, right now, you can't forget, you know, one of the big things, you can't forget that sailing's a sport and you have no excuse not to come out of quarantine in the best shape of your life. That's a really, that's a really good way yeah. to be focused right now. That's very easy. Um, if you can get on the water, obviously that's good, but like, it's very easy to crawl into a hole and go, woe is me, this is tough. But like, there's so many laser sailors who could be doing planks and wall sits every day, um, make a hiking bench, get better at it. Um, you know, there's so much about sailing on YouTube and there's, uh, really interesting interviews and podcasts. And there's so many ways you can call up your buddy and add, run some questions by them, call up your coach, ask things to them. Um, you know, I've been sailing plenty since quarantine, um, <laughs> you know, myself, yeah. um, cause I don't get to sail that much now so I, i've been putting in my time now but yeah, you're, you, you're, you're, finding, you're no, finding the opportunities in it yeah you, i mean yeah. you should there should never you, there's always something to be doing um and if you're if you're the first person to go well i was in quarantine i didn't get any better then um you know and that's true in anything it, it, life's it's, it's gonna good. be a lot, sailing's gonna be very hard for you yeah. <laughs> if, so, you're, if you're the person who's jumping all over it then sailing could be a really cool sport for you for life so, and once we resume normalcy with all of these youth sailors, you know, what, what's your short, brief thought? And you kind of touched on it earlier, at least your, your thoughts on it with high school sailing and, and yeah. college sailing. You know, what, what are your words of wisdom to these kids out there who love racing? They may not be the best at it, um, but as far as it being that lifelong sport. Well, um, yeah, I've got a few things. I mean, just remember that it is a sport. Take your fitness seriously. Um, those people will go further or will have longer careers or be able to sail a wider variety of boats. Yeah. Um, you know, don't think for one second, especially as a youth sailor, that just because you won your local event, the best youth sailor in the country is far from being a very far from being a great, great all around sailor. There's so many more steps to go. So you got to think more global than your local sailing venue. Okay. Um, um, yeah, never, never wait for things to come to you. Go after them. If you get, if you don't wait for the coach to tell you something, ask until you get the answers that you need work is met, put as many hours on the water as you can. And, um, the last thing is, you know, and this is a personal choice because not everyone wants to be a pro sailor or sail the rest of their lives. But if I always looked at college sailing as, um, a big stepping stone to rounding my sailing game out. Um, I think a lot of kids these days are using it more as a means to an end. Sailing, that's good, you know, that's gonna be the peak of their sailing career. And that's true for most people anyway, but you know, they're not as interested in buying a boat after college and going after it. But um, you know, I always looked at college sailing as something to enhance my career, not just the end of my sailing career. Right. There's so much more out there as we've seen. Exactly. All right, we've got Connor Bluen, highly decorated coach and sailor, and an extremely good looking dude. Connor, <laughs> thanks for joining us. And what I learned from you, no drama. No drama, my friend. No drama.